Welcome to Dodgers Daily. I'm Casey Porter. I'm so glad you decided to tune in. We are downtown Wichita, Kansas, and we have a very special guest, Antonio Knowles, right-handed relief pitcher in the Dodgers organization, joins Dodgers Daily. So, hey, Antonio, second time I've got a chance to talk to you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me. I just want to say uh, hello to everybody back home in Key West, all the uh, friends and family supported me my whole life. Uh, glad to be back here, and uh, thank you for all you do for the guys every day in and out. Appreciate that. That kind of ties into one of my questions. And one of the things that I did this year, hey, your slider, it has a life of its own. It's an unbelievable pitch. Incredible depth that, you know, it's different almost every night as far as how I can get hitters out. Gave it the name, the Conchinators, because I know you're so <laughs> proud of your conches back there at Key West. Yeah, so uh, that's actually something back in Key West, we really pride baseball. I would say it's definitely the biggest sport. And uh, in our high school games, I remember my senior year, we had 2,500 out of playoff games. So. It's definitely a big thing, uh, Kong Pride down there, so something that I like to take everywhere I go. Yeah, and most of the Florida schools, they would just bypass their home game because they wanted to go to Key West, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, we played Friday, Saturday series, and I think my senior year we had 27 total games, and I want to say 24 were at home. So, yeah. yeah, teams love to come down and just get their team in that environment. I think it helps a lot with, like, playoffs and stuff, just being in that environment. So it's something very special to be a part of. So last time I talked to you, it was the off season. You had gotten on the water there in the Keys. And so I know, hey, you know, the all-star break's not very long. Yeah. But I've got to think. I mean, I have a pretty good idea. You had to have gotten on the water in your four or five days, right? Yeah, so the all-star break was only about three days. So I didn't want to fly all the way back yeah, to Key right. West, only be down there for about a day and then have to come back out. Pretty tough travel for the all-star break. So me and uh, like six or seven of the guys rented out a lake house out in uh, Oklahoma and we just went out on the water, got some tubing done, went out, sat on the boat on little rafts, got some few beers in with the boys and just kind of <laughs> kicked it back and relaxed for the weekend, cleared the mind from baseball. So nice little mental reset to get into the second half. I'm sure you were the leader of showing everybody how to enjoy that environment, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, being out on the water is pretty uh, second nature to me. So. Anytime I could get out there, I definitely like to take advantage of so, it. So, gotta gotta have a rating. Oklahoma Lakes versus Key West. Is there a comparison there? Uh, I will say the lakes in Oklahoma were a little calmer. Okay. <laughs> There's okay. no waves and stuff, so <laughs> sitting out on the water is definitely a little bit better, but nothing will beat the clear ocean water. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, what hasn't been calm has been that slider that I said I mentioned, the Conchinator. It is an elite pitch. It's just fantastic for you. I know one of your goals, though, was to get some more swing and miss with your four seam this year, and then also, hey, to get that cutter in on left-handers so tell us where your stuff's at right now so yeah when when I'm kind of going in a groove I was on one about uh two two weeks ago went on a nice little stint when I'm getting that They're cutter, called heaters right yeah when I'm getting that cutter and the sinker in zone early it kind of just opens up the slider to where the ones in the dirt they they start swinging at because I'm ahead in the count and have shown that I can get the fastballs in the zone so that's just kind of big been my biggest thing going into every outing is trying to get that first pitch second pitch strike in the zone with the heater you're definitely a guy that, that loves adrenaline. You love the late moments of games, and that brings you confidence, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, when I first turned into a reliever, I got put in the closer role, yeah. and I was a starter my whole life, and I definitely think I like being a reliever better just because of those high-pressure moments where game's kind of on the line, and there's nobody there really to like pick you up. It's kind of just yeah. you, you and the three outs ahead of you, and you just got to get it done. Yeah, can't match that adrenaline almost anywhere else in the world. Okay, so you got moved up to double A in early May. I know a lot of guys say, hey, that's the toughest jump from high A to double A. Talk about that transition. Talk about where you were when you got told you were getting promoted from Michigan to Tulsa. And then talk about what that transition to double A been like. So the night I actually got called up was a funny night. Uh, we were in Peoria, and last season I actually got walked off there twice. So I had some bad luck there. <laughs> Go back this season, get the save opportunity, and I gave up my, I think it was first homer of the year I'd gave up all season and uh, it was actually funny because I went there that happened obviously another like bad outing for me and then I come in the locker room and they're like hey we just want to let you know like you're going up to Tulsa so pack your stuff up and I was just kind of in shock like wasn't expecting it after that outing I guess to be called up but I'd been pitching well up to then so it was kind of just waiting for the moment and just playing each game day by day. Then you get to Tulsa and you got Polarski hitting 101, you got Leisure hitting 99, Gamboa hitting 99, you got <laughs> yeah. John Rooney. I'm sure that was fun getting yeah. pitched well, it was great. Yeah, oh, was being great. around those guys every day just really helps you kind of become the best player possible. Like 
when we come out to stretch, even though we're like having a lot of fun and like messing around, joking around, like we know when it's time to go to work and it's time to get work done. Like each and every guy has each other's back and we'll do anything for anybody to get better and to help themselves improve in their career. Yep. So, okay, things that you think that you're good enough at right now to be a consistent major leaguer. On the other end of that, what is one thing, maybe a set of things that you think that you need to continue to work on? I think right now the thing that's going to get me to the big league, same thing that got me drafted, it, it's going to be my slider. I, I think it's probably my best pitch by far. I mean, I throw it 65, 70% of the time, which yeah. is super high for an off-speed pitch. And then I just think for, the main thing for me to make that next jump of going from here to triple or the big leagues is – getting those fastballs in zone and just being able to constantly be ahead of hitters mm -hmm. to where when I'm throwing my slider for chase, they're now chasing after it and it's not in 1-0 or 2-0 counts to where they can kind of lay off of it. Mm -hmm. So I think just the aspect of getting those heaters in zone early, I think once I really get that control down, I think it'll be sky's the limit from there. You have a great message going all the way back to your days at Stetson, Juco. I mean, this wasn't always easy for you. So yeah. talk about the message for kids that, you know, hey, want to become like you, want to become a major leaguer someday. I would just say don't stop working. I mean, going into my senior year of high school, I didn't have a college offer. I didn't have any colleges really looking at me. And even up until the end of the season, I was only committed to a junior college and thankfully got drafted by the Rangers. That opened up a few Division One offers going into summer. Ended up choosing Stetson. Went there, didn't pitch how I wanted to. So even then, like stuff wasn't going my way. Decided to go to JUCO, get a new look at new scenery. And from there, just had a really good bond with the coaches and team there and figured out my slider, got moved to the bullpen. And even though at the time, I didn't think the bullpen was where I was gonna be. I mean, looking back now, it was probably the best decision my coach could have made and I made for my career. No doubt about it. Hey, go ahead and get you some water because it's like 185 degrees. <laughs> yeah, it's here. a hot one today. Stay hydrated. So, yeah. Antonio Knowles, second time I got a chance to talk to you. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you.